The movie begins at the edge of South Korea and North Korea in the bustling city of Yoksam. This city is positioned just next to Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea. Chaos ensues as a group of rogue soldiers plots to capture a counterfeit money factory located in the heart of Yoksam. Meanwhile, the city is protected by the highly trained and elite legend Troops 12, a special forces squad tasked with safeguarding the factory against any potential threats from pirates or other criminal organizations. Im Chul Ryung and his wife, Ha Ryung, join forces with the protection mission at the factory. However, the mission takes a dangerous turn when they receive orders from their commander, Colonel Cha Ki Sung, to defend the factory against an impending attack. Without hesitation, Chul Ryung and his team swiftly move to carry out the raid. Upon arrival at the factory, they find themselves in a tense standoff between North Korean soldiers and rebels. To their shock, they discover that their own commander, Ki Sung, is the mastermind behind the rebellion. The rebels successfully take Ha Ryung hostage, leaving Chul Ryung and his troops with no choice but to surrender for her safety. However, their surrender is met with a tragic outcome. Despite laying down their weapons, Ki Sung and his troops ruthlessly slaughter everyone, including Ha Ryung. The only survivor of the brutal battle is Chul Ryung, who is badly injured from enemy fire. The following day, the North Korean military command headquarters holds a crucial meeting led by General Won Hyun Sul. They discuss the devastating attack on the state-owned counterfeit money factory and the fact that the culprit, Cha Ki Sung, the once respected commander of the Legend 12 Special Forces, has fled to Seoul, South Korea. The story then shifts to the bustling streets of Seoul, where South Korean police officer, Kong Jin Tai, is in hot pursuit of a drug dealer named Tho Sik. However, his pursuit is interrupted by a call from his daughter, Park Yoo Na, begging him to buy her the latest iPhone. This distraction allows him to slip away, and Jin Tai is later scolded by his superior, Lieutenant Pio, for his failure to capture the drug dealer. In the heart of Pyongyang City, Chul Ryung was struggling to survive. As the sole survivor of the brutal attack on the factory, he was subjected to intense interrogations by the North Korean regime to determine if he was a part of the rebel group within Legend 12. But after much torture, he was finally cleared of all charges. Shortly after, the general offered Chul Ryung a new mission. He was tasked with capturing Ki Sung, who had stolen a large sum of counterfeit banknotes and was hiding with them. The North Korean government was preparing to send a delegation to South Korea in the name of diplomatic cooperation, and they needed him to retrieve the stolen banknotes before Ki Sung could cause any more damage. Meanwhile, in Seoul, South Korea, Jin Tai was trying to enjoy his day off. However, he was interrupted by his daughter's constant nagging for a new cell phone, and his sister-in-law's request to borrow money from his wife, Park So Yeon. Just as So Yeon was telling him about the visit from Lieutenant Pio, their peaceful day was interrupted yet again. So, Lieutenant Pio come because he has a new mission in tow. Jin Tai was to be a part of a diplomatic cooperation effort to capture the North Korean fugitive, Ki Soon. A week had passed and the joint mission was now underway. The movements of all soldiers involved in the mission were closely monitored by South Korea's National Intelligence Service to ensure the safety of the nation's sovereignty. Jin Tai's task was to assist Chul Ryung in capturing Ki Soon. Their first objective was to locate and apprehend an informant of Ki Sung named Park Myung Ho. That fateful day, Chul Ryun, the highly trained and agile North Korean agent, set out to track down Myung Ho. Then they engaged in a fierce street fight, but Myung Ho managed to slip away from Chul Ryun's grasp. Soon after, Myung Ho quickly reported to Ki Sung, who was holed up in a luxury beach villa. He warned Ki Sung that their situation had become dire as the North Korean government had teamed up with South Korea to arrest them. That night, Chul Ryung was invited to stay at Jin Tai's humble abode as he had nowhere to stay in South Korea. At that time, his family warmly welcomed Chul Ryung and during that first meeting, Min Young, Jin Tai's sister-in-law, fell head over heels in love with him. The next day, Ki Sung continued his business dealings with the South Korean mafia, trying to produce counterfeit money. However, the two parties were unable to reach an agreement. As the Jin Tai family welcomed Chul Ryung with open arms, they were surprised to learn of his North Korean origins. Determined to continue the mission to track down Myung Ho, they scoured the city for any leads. With the help of their allies, Jin Tai and Chul Ryung were able to obtain CCTV footage that implicated Myung Ho in a South Korean drug ring. Undeterred by the danger, the two law enforcement officers made their way to the headquarters of the drug lord in search of information on Myung Ho's whereabouts. During a chaotic brawl with the drug cartel's henchmen, Chul Ryung and Jin Tai persevered in their quest for information. Although they left empty-handed, their determination did not go to waste. With the support of the police and NIS, Myung Ho's location was finally uncovered. As they closed in on the gambling house, Chul Ryung and Jin Tai were determined to apprehend Myung Ho. Upon arriving, they quickly scoured the area but found no sign of the informant. Their persistence paid off as Chul Ryung eventually stumbled upon Myung Ho in a nearby alley, where he was arming himself with the help of Zhang Dong Yi, one of Ki Sung's accomplices. 
However, Jintai was faced with unexpected difficulties as he was wrongly accused of being a police officer conducting an unauthorized raid at the gambling house. This resulted in a fierce showdown between him and the bookies, who saw him as a threat to their illegal operations. Meanwhile, as Chul Ryung closed in on Myung Ho, the informant expressed his desire to retire from the criminal world to Dong Yi. However, he saw this as an act of treachery and, without hesitation, executed Myung Ho with multiple shots. Not long after, Chul Ryung and Dong Yi faced each other in a fierce battle. But unfortunately, Chul Ryung was defeated. Meanwhile, Jin Tai was also seriously injured after being repeatedly stabbed by the bookies. Despite their wounds, they made their way back home to recuperate. With his days as a fugitive numbered, Ki Soon decided to take matters into his own hands. He ordered his men to confiscate the counterfeiting machine belonging to the South Korean Mafia after a failed business negotiation. As Jin Tai readied himself for his next shift, he enjoyed a meal with Min Young and So Yeon. However, his plans were disrupted when he received a call from his boss with a shocking revelation. It turns out that the North Korean delegation's mission to capture Cha Ki Soon was just a cover up. Their true objective was to retrieve the stolen counterfeit banknotes that Ki Soon had in his possession. Upon learning of the truth, Jin Tai was disappointed with Chul Ryung for not being forthcoming with him. Chul Ryung admits that he had been sent to Seoul by his country to seize the money printing machine, but he also had personal motives for carrying out the mission. He sought revenge against Ki Soon, who had heartlessly killed his innocent wife. Then they put aside their differences and set off to continue their pursuit of the rogue criminal. Upon arriving at Ki Soon's hideout, a luxurious villa, they prepared themselves for any surprises that might come their way. Meanwhile, Ki Soon was having another meeting with the South Korean mafia leaders to discuss the counterfeit money printing from the day before. Impatient, Ki Soon immediately ordered his men to kill all members of the mafia. In the middle of the massacre, Chul Ryung and Jin Tai saw an opportunity to ambush their target. In the end, Chul Ryung managed to overpower Ki Soon but was consumed by his desire for revenge and was about to finish him off. Shortly after, Jin Tai stepped in, suggesting they bring the case to the Korean military court. However, when they let their guard down, Ki Soon took advantage of the opportunity and jumped off a bridge to escape. The mission was a failure, and Jin Tai reluctantly released the counterfeit money prints to escort Chul Ryung back to North Korea. He knew that if Chul Ryung failed to bring the money prints, his life would be at risk. With heavy hearts, they went their separate ways. Chul Ryung was eventually able to return the counterfeit banknotes to his country and was rewarded with a promotion and acceptance back into the legend's 12 special forces. Meanwhile, Jin Tai was on his way home from work when he suddenly received a call from Ki Soon. The ruthless criminal informed Jin Tai that his wife and children had been taken hostage near the port of Incheon and were being held for ransom. If he did not return the counterfeit notes within a certain time frame, his family would be killed. Panicked and desperate, Jin Tai reached out to Chul Ryung for help. Chul Ryung, who considered Jin Tai and his family to be like his own, was determined to save them from harm. Then he quickly requested permission from General One to return to Seoul and temporarily borrow the counterfeit ban notes. Upon hearing Jin Tai's predicament, General One showed compassion and granted Chul Ryung permission to help save Jin Tai's family. Meanwhile, Jin Tai's desperate search led him to the Incheon port, where he found his wife and children, held captive and wired to a bomb. Under the watch of a sniper, he attempted to negotiate with Ki Soon for their release. Unbeknownst to Ki Soon, Chul Ryung had managed to take out the sniper, giving the upper hand. At that time, Chul Ryung made a deal with Ki Soon, offering half of the counterfeit money in exchange for the release of Jin Tai's family. After the hostages were freed, he challenged Ki Soon to a duel for the rest of the money. Jin Tai, now with his family safely away, returned to the port to aid Chul Ryung in the intense battle against Ki Soong and his accomplices. With a hard-fought victory, Chul Ryung and Jin Tai emerged triumphant, having defeated all their opponents. Taking a moment to catch their breath on the pier, Chul Ryung chose to turn over half of the counterfeit money to the South Korean police and the NIS. However, Jin Tai made a surprising move by throwing the machine into the sea, hoping that the loss of the print would resolve the problem. Despite not being able to bring home the counterfeit money, Chul Ryung was still pardoned by the general, who even considered him a hero for his successful mission of eliminating the country's traitors. On the other hand, Jin Tai also received a well-deserved promotion and was now serving as an inspector in the Seoul police force. The bond between Jin Tai and Chul Ryung only grew stronger as they continued to work towards maintaining good relations between their countries. The moral that can be learned from this movie is about the importance of trusting our instincts and think about the impact our choices will have on those around us when we need to make a decision.